Hi everybody, today we're going to be talking about the properties of water. This is the second half of the chemistry PowerPoint that I asked you to print out or asked you to look at. Uh, we're not going to look at the first part together because it's really basic chemistry stuff and hopefully you either remember that really well or a little bit of review will get you there. Um, but however, the properties of water you may not have focused on as much in the past and they're really important to all of life. So we're going to spend some time on them right now. Oh, and I'm going to turn the audio off. Something you may notice as you go through these PowerPoints that they have an audio in the background, I find it very annoying. If you like it, listen to it on your own time. All right, so why do we care about water in a biology class? Well, it's because all of life happens in or around water. So we have where our cells are surrounded in water and our cells are filled with water. Okay, so the chemistry of water makes water a really, really special molecule. And the main reason it's a special molecule is because of the fact that it can hydrogen bond. One water molecule can hydrogen bond to another molecule. And it's because of the fact that water is a polar molecule that allows it to do this. So let's remember back to polarity. Um, if you remember back, there we go. If you remember back to polarity, it means that the atoms within a molecule share their electrons unevenly. Oxygen is really electronegative. It has a very high attraction to electrons. So as the electrons are spinning around this here molecule, they're going to spend more time by the oxygen atom than they're going to spend by the hydrogen atom. So that makes the oxygen atom partially negative and hydrogen partially positive. Well, what happens to positives and negatives? They're attracted to each other, and that's a hydrogen bond. The negative from one oxygen, uh, from an, the oxygen atom of one water molecule, is attracted to the positive of the hydrogen on another water molecule. So it means that every water molecule is going to be bonded to it, to um, one, two, three, four other water molecules around it. So when you look at that. It means that water forms this structure. Even though it's a liquid, most liquids don't have a structure. But water is different. Because even though it's in liquid form, it forms a structure because of all these hydrogen bonds. And that makes water really, really special. Because of this hydrogen bonding ability, water has several special properties. And here they are. And we're going to talk about each of them. So let's go through them. So the first one is adhesion and cohesion. Right. Cohesion is water molecules' ability to bond, to bond together. So water being attracted to water. Okay, this makes water sticky. It means as one water molecule moves, it's going to pull the next one with it, which is going to pull the next one, which is going to pull the next one. It acts in a, like a chain almost. Okay, this also creates surface tension. And you felt surface tension if you've ever done a belly flop into a pool. Okay, when you go into a big body of water, you have to break through the hydrogen bonds to get past the surface of the water. So if you dive into the water, you're breaking a very small number of hydrogen bonds. If you belly flop into the water, you have to break a large number of hydrogen bonds, and that hurts because it takes a lot of energy, so that's where the pink belly and the pain comes from. Okay? Surface tension, while it causes us pain, um, allows for um, insects to walk and live on top of water. Okay? And also, um, one thing you should Google is the Jesus lizard. It can run across the water. It's very cool. Um, it also allows us to drink through a straw because as you pull on the water, um, one mo water molecule pulls the next one, pulls the next one, pulls the next one, pulls the next one, and creates a whole line through the straw. Adhesion is water molecules' ab ability to bond or stick to other substances, other polar substances. Okay, and that creates capillary action, like and the meniscus that we see on a graduated cylinder. Okay, so this is really the level of the water. This is what you read, but the water is sticking to the sides of the tube or the glass, whatever it is, and so it pulls it up on the side. So this pulling right here on the sides, that's adhesion. Okay, Adhesion also causes water to climb up a paper towel. So if you've got a puddle of water and you put just the tip of a paper towel in it, the water will move up through the whole paper towel. That's adhesion. Okay? And adhesion and cohesion also allow for water to move through plants. This is a great thing. Okay? Think about a 400-foot tree. 
the sequoias are 400 feet tall. How does water get from the ground all the way to the tippy top of that tree against the pull of gravity? Well, it's because of adhesion and cohesion. So here's a nifty little picture. On the inside of trees in their trunk, I'm not finding my cursor. Here we go. On the inside of trees in their trunk, they've got specialized tubes that go up through them called xylem. And the water makes a big, long chain through the xylem all the way up to the leaves. Up at the leaves, the sun is hitting the tree, making the leaves warm, and making the water inside of the leaves evaporate. When water gets warm, it evaporates. Okay, so the water evaporates out of the leaf, and that leaves an empty spot, so the next, piece, the next water molecule is pulled up, which pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls, the whole chain all the way up to the top, and it just keeps going. And it's that pulling of water, because of the evaporation of water out of the top, that water keeps moving up. And it never falls back down because also the water is sticking to the sides of the tree, to the sides of the xylem as it goes up through adhesion. Okay, so there's the water evaporating, there's the water moving up. Okay, the next property of water that's really important is that it's such a good solvent. Because water is so polar, it's, a really, it's a, able to dissolve a lot of things. Okay? And that's because the water molecules are going to surround anything ionic. Anything that can form positive and negative ions is going to instantly dissolve in water. And that's why you can get tons and tons of salt into water, the ocean, okay? because the sodium and the chloride ions are surrounded by the polar water molecules and they dissolve right in. Okay? Now, here's some words you're going to want to know as we talk about solutions. So remember, a solution is a combination of something dissolved in a liquid. So we call the liquid the solvent, the something that dissolves into it is a solute, and the two together make a solution. I remember this best when I think about Kool-Aid. When you make Kool-Aid, you got water, that's your solvent. You mix in the Kool-Aid packet and the sugar, those are the solutes, and then together they make a solution of Kool-Aid. Okay, so you're gonna need to remember those words. Ready? So what kinds of things are gonna be able to dissolve in water? Well, they're gonna be things that are hydrophilic. Phyo means to love. So anything that is hydrophilic is water loving. And it's gonna have it's gonna be all substances that are attracted to water. So that would be polar things. Good. So then things that won't dissolve in water, we call them hydrophobic, phobic meaning fearing. So those are gonna be substances that don't attract to water, so they're gonna be nonpolar. Very good. So that's why fat does not dissolve in water. And the reason for that is, is because of these huge long hydrocarbon chains. Okay? Remember, in order for a molecule to be polar, the electrons have to be shared unevenly between the atoms. Well, carbon and hydrogen have a very similar attraction to electro very similar attraction to electrons. I may have just said that wrong, but carbon and hydrogen share electrons very, very evenly, which makes them nonpolar. So you've got these huge, huge, long nonpolar portions of this molecule, so it can't dissolve in water, and that's why oil floats on top of water. Next um, special property is the special case of ice. Most molecules, when they form a solid, become more dense because they form a tight structure. And that tight structure makes them really dense and they sink. But water does not. Because of the fact that water is um, able to make those hydrogen bonds, water is going to form a crystal, a very spread out crystal structure. And because that structure is so spread out, the, water, the molecules can be very have a very low density and therefore it's going to float on top of the water. So here's your really spread out ice structure. Okay, And this is really important because it allows for just the top layer of the water to freeze and then life can still exist underneath it. Okay, The water doesn't get too cold because the ice is um, blocking it off and keeping the bottom from getting too, too cold. I mean, it's still cold, but not. It doesn't freeze all the way. And then life can still exist under there. So life can live year-round in bodies of water. Okay? So life can survive. So if the ice sank, then the entire pond, the entire lake, the entire ocean would freeze solid and everything in there would die. And given the fact that all life started in water, that would be a really bad thing. We wouldn't be around. Okay? Um, the fact that ice floats also causes a turnover in lakes. Um, sinking water and rising water as it gets cold and goes down, but then as it freezes, it comes up. It brings nutrients up and down with it, so like this. So there's a stratified lake during the summer, but in, um, as the seasons change, the water's going to turn over. And all these nutrients down here on the bottom from things that decomposed and settled down, those are all going to get brought back up to the top where life is going to exist. 
Okay, the next property of water is um, its specific heat. Okay, water has a very high specific heat. If you remember, specific heat is a measurement of how much energy it takes to change the temperature of a liquid one degree Celsius. Okay, it takes a lot of energy to heat up water one degree Celsius or to cool it one degree Celsius. So it's really resisting changes in temperature. This is great because therefore water can moderate the temperatures on the planet. The water on our planet, which remember is like 75% of the planet, sucks in a lot of heat and then slowly as it gets cold releases that heat back out and it keeps the temperature from getting too too hot or too too cold. And that's why the temperature is always a little bit more moderate over by the lake here in Chicago. Um, it's a couple degrees cooler in the summer because the water, the lake is absorbing all the heat and it's a couple degrees warmer in the winter because the lake is releasing heat slowly. Okay, I'm going to ignore this one. All right, the last property of water we want to talk about is the fact that it has a very high heat of vaporization, which means it takes a lot of energy for water to be turned from liquid to vapor. To, in, order, in other words, it takes a lot of energy for water to evaporate. Okay, that is really, really great because of the fact that it allows us to sweat and we can then have what's called evaporative cooling. Um, evaporative cooling is not the property. The high heat of vaporization is the property. Evaporative cooling is a byproduct of this property. That's kind of important because when you're writing essays, if you called evaporative cooling the property, you wouldn't get points. So you have to talk about high heat of vaporization. So what we do with evaporative cooling is that our body sweats, we release water, and then those water molecules are heated up by the surrounding and by your body temperature, and the molecules that are going to evaporate first are the ones that have the most energy that are the hottest. So it removes the hottest molecules from you, leaving behind cooler molecules, and that's why sweating helps cool your body. Um, we as humans are able to sweat. We have sweat glands everywhere. Most other mammals have to rely on panting and then the water is, um, comes out and, and evaporates out of their respiratory tract and because they pant they don't have vocal cords whereas we get vocal cords and get to speak. It's quite nice. All right the rest of this PowerPoint deals with pH and again you should have learned pH before I want you to spend some time on that on your own but hopefully you've got a better idea now of the five really important properties of water. Remember that all of those properties happen because of the fact that water molecules can hydrogen bond to each other and you need to be able to explain hydrogen bonding in pretty good detail. Alright so hopefully that helps you out and I will see you guys next time.